Okay, we're back, and we're finally ready to get started on this rebuild. Uh, last time we, we made a video, we tore down a Odeon PM, and you can see here all the pieces of Raid out here on the desk. Uh, if you missed the last video, then there's a link to it here uh, on the screen now. Uh, but you can see all the pieces here and what we're going to try to do. Uh, remember, we're working on re refreshing, restoring this bag uh, because the leather has, has gotten old and cracked and dirty and we're going to try and make it like new. So away these guys go and we're going to put them away and get started looking at some of the materials we're going to be using. So I went to Tandy Leather this morning and went shopping a bit and came back with uh, a variety of different things and I'm pretty excited about the different projects we're going to do. So let me go through what I bought. So the first thing I've got here is what's called Veg Tan Leather, which uh, Louis Vuitton has fancily named uh, Vaquetta Leather. Uh, it's just basically skin colored. Uh, let me give you a close up here of what it looks like. Uh, I got it in two thicknesses. So I got a, a slightly thicker and a slightly thinner variety that we'll use for the, the different uh, pieces that we're gonna be replacing. There is a bit of dirt uh, to be found here, so the pieces aren't perfectly clean. Uh, that's to be expected. So we're just gonna, when we cut these pieces out, uh, find the, the best parts and use those. The next thing I've got here is some lining fabric. Uh, I decided to make two additional bags along with this thing. Uh, while I've got it taken apart, it's easy to make some patterns. Uh, and so I've also gotten some uh, additional leather. Uh, this is just a, a pigskin lining. Uh, that we're going to use for the lining of the two additional bags that I'm going to be making. Uh, and I'll show you what those are going to look like here in just a minute. This leather actually has two sides. Well, I guess it's obvious that it has two sides, but the two sides are different. One is kind of soft and suede. Uh, the other side is more shiny and finished. I haven't actually decided which, which side is the outside here. Uh, I kind of prefer the suede side for just the way it feels on your hand. Uh, but my wife kind of likes the shiny side. So leave me a comment and let me know which one you think should be the part uh, that is that is the inside of the lining that your hands are going to be touching. Now, I mentioned that we're going to be making two additional bags. Uh, so I got some really interesting kind of unique pieces that we're going to use for the outside of these two additional bags. One is kind of a pink pearly uh, material, and that's going to be the outside of one of the bags. And you can see that on... The outside, it's, it's very kind of uh, pearly, like pearlescent or, or shiny. It's got um, kind of a sparkle to it. And on the back side, it's got this kind of bluish fabric. So it's almost like the Louis canvas, um, which is fabric on one side and, and sort of this coated uh, canvas on the other. Uh, and so that's what we're going to use for the outside of one of the additional bags that we're going to be making. The other bag that we're going to be making is going to be bright red. Uh, and here's the, the leather that we're going to be using for it. Uh, this uh, color is pretty awesome. It's also got kind of that pearly look to it. We'll get a close up here. Uh, it's got that same kind of blue backing material on the back. And so this is going to be the other bag that we're making. Now, my plan is to finish these two bags and then actually give them away uh, to somebody who has uh, liked, commented, subscribed. Uh, on the channel. So do uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment if you want to be uh, considered for uh, the contest here. I'm actually going to give these two bags away, uh, the pink one and the red one, to some lucky viewers. Okay, so getting started here, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure I had a good pattern for all of the different pieces. Uh, and so what I'm, what I'm doing here is I've taken some just some, some cheap uh, eighth inch plywood uh, that I had laying around and I'm just going to outline the the different pieces of canvas and leather that I need to recreate uh, so that I can do it in a repeatable way. Now I tried to kind of tape this thing down but uh, this didn't end up working. Um, you know there's just too much dust on it so uh, I, you know that was a bust. I just had to hold it in place and draw around it and so that's what you can see me doing here. And then I just wanted to darken the lines so once I had it drawn in pencil I went around it with uh, a sharpie type marker and just thicken those lines up. Now the one thing that I'm being really careful to do here is to stay on the outside of that line. So one of the secrets to creating really really accurate patterns uh, is to make sure that you know which side of that line you're going to cut on. 
Uh, it turns out that that marker makes about a line that's about an eighth inch thick. And so if you're not careful to stay on the correct side of that line, then the patterns are going to be really sloppy and really inaccurate. And so I'm drawing around, making sure that the line is staying on the outside of that pencil mark. And then when I cut things out, I'm just going to cut away the line and leave uh, only the wood without any of the line showing. And that's how I'll know that I've got an exact fit with my pattern. Now, obviously, for the, the bag that I'm restoring for my wife's Louis bag, uh, I'm not actually going to need these patterns, right? So, so these parts will be reused for, for that particular project. Uh, and I'm just going to be replacing the leather. Uh, but for the two additional bags, for the pink bag and the red bag that I'll be giving away, I'm going to need to have patterns for the, the canvas. So uh, that's what I'm doing this for. Uh, now you can see me cutting out the leather pieces. Uh, it turns out that the, the thin strip that goes across the top of the bags is uh, a bit of a, a pain. I'm going to have to redo that piece because I didn't get it of, of kind of equal thickness and it turned out to be sort of a mess. Uh, I only had to make one pattern for each of the, the side pieces because they're exactly the same. And so uh, that uh, is pretty straightforward there. Now, the bottom piece on the purse, I didn't have a piece of uh, plywood long enough. So I did have a sheet of this kind of clear acrylic stuff uh, that I was going to be using. And so uh, I went ahead and used that. I made some picture frames a while back and I used the, that acrylic for the, the front glass. So uh, I ended up using one of those to, to get this pattern. So this pattern looks a little bit different, but I make it in exactly the same way. Now, if you're paying attention while I was making that pattern, you saw that on the bottom corner, uh, of one side of the bag, I made a little dashed line. And that's because there was a little pleat, a little tiny pleat in that outside canvas material that I had to cut open. Uh, and you can see they've just made a slit and then stitched that pleat in place. And so that is one thing I hadn't shown. So now to cut out these patterns, uh, I just went over to my bandsaw in my shop to do this. And I'm just being careful to cut along the inside of that line so that the blade actually cuts off the last little bit of line on the pattern. And uh, you can see it's not exact. I mean, the bandsaw is not super precision, uh, but I'm gonna go back afterwards with a, just a sanding block, a piece of sandpaper uh, st stuck to a, a block of wood. And I'm gonna go along all these edges and make sure and clean them up and get it to where it needs to be. But this process doesn't have to be super, super exact, uh, but the closer you can get to the original, obviously, the better that that's going to be. Uh, you don't have to do it this way. Uh, you certainly don't have to use uh, uh, acrylic and, and plywood for this process. You could use paper. You could use cardstock. You could use uh, you know, uh, sheets of plastic. You could use grocery bag, you know, paper grocery bags, that kind of thing. There's lots of different things that you could use for this. So don't feel like you have to go out and get uh, an expensive power tool or, or anything like that to be able to, to make patterns like this. It's actually really, really straightforward. So, uh, you know, don't be intimidated by this. Just make sure you pay attention to where that line is and then cut your patterns out and feel good about it. So that's what I've done here. Now, I know some of you are going to be interested in trying this yourself. And so I wanted to get a way for you to get the pattern here. So I printed out some 1 8 inch grid paper and I've taken some photos so that you can get exact measurements on what all these pieces look like. They're all very curvy uh, and sort of non-square. So it's a bit hard to measure them and then put the, the measurements you know, in the description or something like that. Uh, so I just went ahead and photographed them on this 1 8 inch grid paper. And hopefully you'll be able to extrapolate from that to get what you need to do if you wanna try this project on your own. Okay, next time we'll start cutting out pieces and start assembly and preparation and all those sorts of things. Uh, if you do want a chance at winning the pink or the red bag, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment uh, so that I can make sure to uh, know who you are and get your name entered in that contest. Um, I'm putting links to the previous videos in this series. Uh, in the on the screen now so feel free to click those and go have a look if you want to get caught up thanks